The Tile of Self-Confidence, Episode 206. Welcome to the Tile of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetileofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tile of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a fantastic lady on the show today. She is a comic book artist, and I'm just excited to have her on and share her story. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Yumi Sakugawa. Yumi, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi. Yeah, of course. My name is Yumi Sakugawa. I'm a comic book artist, illustrator, and author of three books, including I think I am in friend love with you and your illustrated guide to becoming one with the universe. I'm based in Los Angeles. And in addition to making comics, I'm also a very strong advocate for raising mental health awareness. So I also talk a lot about mental health, mental illness, and decreasing the stigma around talking about mental illness, especially in the Asian American community. And also, I'm a big advocate of meditation and mindfulness. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love the cause that you are fighting for. I mean, you know, not a lot of people are aware of mental health and, you know, how it can affect other people and how we can go there and help each other out. So thanks so much. And Yumi, what's your cultural background? So I'm second generation, half Japanese, half Okinawan. My father is from Okinawa and my mother is from mainland Japan and I was born in Orange County in Southern California. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that info. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I think the one I go back to, and I'm such a quote junkie, I'm always looking for new quotes about everything. But um, I think the quote that I always go back to is a quote by Judy Garland. It was, always be a first rate version of yourself instead of a second rate version of somebody else. I love that quote because, you know, especially with Asian women, you know, we've always been programmed to just not really be ourselves, but to just follow what other people tell us to be. And when that happens, you know, we forget our sense of self and, you know, we feel trapped. We feel like we're not living our true self. So I always believe just being, you know, your true, true authentic self is way better than being somebody else. And, you know, this quote pretty much describes it. And don't worry, I'm a quote junkie, too. I mean, I get quote happy sometimes on Facebook just because I really love just, you know, inspiring people out there and reminding them that, you know, we can be more positive. We can go out there and do amazing things. So. Thanks for sharing that quote. And, you know, in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? Gosh, um, it it is something I've been thinking about a lot, especially in the last few years, basically my whole life, really. I think at the end of the day, it's just really being comfortable in your own skin, regardless of who you're around or what situation you're in, whether you're in a crowd of people, or if you're just sitting by yourself, just being really comfortable with who you are and really believing in yourself, regardless of what other people think of you or what other people may say or whatever external validation may or may not come your way. Just really having faith in your best self. Awesome. And I love that definition. And I think that's something, you know, especially Asian women, you know, have to start learning to do is being comfortable with their own selves, right? Because they feel like, you know, they don't trust themselves, they don't believe in themselves. And, you know, I've been there. And, and um, you know, it's something that we all go through, right? And we're not alone in this journey, this, which is why, you know, I really wanted to create this podcast to show others that we all go through the same stuff, we all go through the same challenges and thoughts and doubts. And we're here to lift each other up and support each other. So love that definition. And, you know, what was your life like before your discovery of self confidence? For me, I was, I grew up in a pretty uh, cookie cutter suburb in Southern California. And so it was, I was raised by my parents and I also have an older brother. And I think especially since I was maybe um, 10 or 11, I had, I think I just had um, depression, but I just didn't quite 
have the words to articulate it. And I think, I think with my immigrant parents, I don't think they necessarily had the cultural context to understand that either. So I think I was just always, I just had really low self-esteem for most of my life. And it really wasn't until um, college where I started to go to, out of my own volition, um, go to therapy, get on medication and really start, started a lot of the intense inner work to really build my self-esteem from the ground up. And and I'm 31 now. I feel like it really wasn't until my late 20s to my early 30s where I really started to give myself permission to have confidence in myself. Thanks for sharing that. And I think, you know, most people feel like it's too late for them to change when really it's not. I mean, you know, my journey is the same. I probably didn't go through this whole journey of like learning about myself and, you know, having more self-confidence around the same, the same time as you, you know, late 20s, early 30s. Because, you know, all our lives, it's just like we've been told to be the good girl or the good, the good daughter, the good, you know, sister. And the effects of that happens like with depression, low self-esteem, not trusting yourself. And sometimes we don't know where to turn to. And, you know, it can be challenging when we feel like when we're all alone. So, you know, I'm glad you're able to share the story and be and help women out there, especially our listeners, realize that it doesn't matter what age, you know, you start going in this journey, it's never too late. And age is just a number, whether it's in your early 30s, your 40s, it's there's always room for improvement. There's always room for change. And it's all about just taking action. So, you know, because of this um, realization, what's your life been like now? Well, I think it was years of first therapy, and then discovering meditation in my early 20s, I think it's been really about going inward and seeking my own inner validation and really trusting my intuition in everything, whether it's um, the type of company I keep or really believing that I deserve a life, a very creative, fulfilling life instead of a boring day job. And so I feel like it's been this very transformative journey of taking For one example, instead of seeing my drawing and writing as just a hobby, to really see it as a vocational calling where it's something that I could share with more people and having the confidence to share my voice and my story to other people. And I think think really in the last few months, uh, because I am a published author and becoming more and more of a public figure, really embracing visibility and discovering what that means for myself, especially as an Asian American woman. And so instead of passively accepting public appearances as a part of my career, uh, really actively embracing it and wanting to project myself as a confident woman with agency, especially to younger Asian American women. I think it's a responsibility that I'm beginning to be more conscious of that there are younger Asian American women who read my work and see me as this artist who's putting her work out there and really wanting to give everybody, other people permission to, to live their best life and to really love themselves. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I believe the same thing. I think it's our duty and our responsibility, um, not just for Asian Americans, just for all Asians out there to show them what's possible, to show them that, you can go out there and do anything you want. Don't, you know, there's no limits. There's no boundaries. You know, just go out there and do it. It's not easy, but it's totally, totally worth it. And I'm glad you're using, you know, you know, doing comics to spread that message and, you know, show little girls that they can go out there and do the same thing. And you mean, you know, for the woman who is listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? I say meditate. You can start with five minutes a day in the morning and eventually work your way up to 15 to 20 minutes. It's the advice I give to young artists and really to everybody in general. I think so many of us are just inundated with distractions, um, especially online, but also offline too with, with all the tragic news that's happening or pressure you get from family and peers 
I think the most important gift you could give yourself is the ability to go inward and to really listen to your own inner silence. And I think if you do that, even if it's just for five minutes, whether it's in the morning or during a lunch break or before you go to sleep, cumulatively, it's something that's really going to ground you, increase your intuition, and really put you in a calmer state where you're going to be more receptive to inspiration and joy and your own true self that isn't what society tells you or what your family tells you you should be. Awesome. And I love the tip that you mentioned. And, you know, five minutes a day can go a long way. I always say, you know, big results happen through small, simple daily actions. And, you know, something as little as meditating for five minutes a day can really change a person's life. So great advice. And Yumi, if our listeners wanted to check out your comic books, get to know a little bit more about you, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes. So I'm pretty active on Twitter and Instagram. I I share drawings on a pretty regular basis. So it's at Yumi Sakugawa for my Twitter and Instagram, just my full name without any space or dashes. Um, I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. And uh, just a week or two ago, I finally started a Snapchat account, which I'm still learning to use, which is also Yumi Sakugawa. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Yumi, you can also head on over to thetaoofselfconfidence.com and search for Yumi's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Yumi for taking the time to share her story and journey with us. So thank you so much. Thank you, Shana, for having me. It was an honor to have you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you later. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.